Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to show you the optimized media workflow in DaVinci Resolve 14 and 15 and how you can edit your 4K video clips faster on your laptop or not so hot machine. So let's get into it. So one of the biggest trends is that as we move towards 4K video and things like RAW and, you know, just these massive files and codecs, one of the biggest problems is, well, I guess several biggest problems, is the ability to play this back and edit it smoothly on any machine. Now, of course, as things like laptops get beefier, um, it becomes slightly easier, but of course, things like H.264 from the GH5 are highly compressed files that take up a lot of CPU power. And of course, yes, we have things like eGPUs we can plug in, but a lot of the times it's just too hard to get too much power. And one of the other things that people forget about is hard drive speed. You know, in this project right here, we have a lot of 4K clips, but of course, if I'm playing this off a traditional hard drive, you know, that's hard, especially if we're doing like a multicam sync or if we have a lot of these clips playing at once, um, that takes a, a big toll on the machine. So the optimized media workflow is basically a proxy workflow. What it does is it creates smaller, easier to edit with files that are going to be attached to your clips automatically and you can easily use them and it's just awesome. Um, so this is a shoot that we did for a tattoo shop, a uh, very cool place. Guys, awesome. They do some really incredible work. But of course, there's a lot of clips here. And now I'm not going to do the optimized media for all the clips because then we've got to wait. Um, but of course, there is one thing you could do. Now, if you wanted to do the traditional form of proxy, you know, media management, you'd come down to file media management and you could do transcode. You could transcode all your media, choose whatever you want. Uh, maybe a lower resolution, and then boom, you can import those, edit with those, and then relink to all of your large media. Now, we're not going to do that, um, but I just wanted to show you this because this is really handy, and media management has a lot of cool stuff in it, so definitely check that out. Um, it can be really handy. All right, so let's get into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a couple clips that I want to bring in to this test folder. And in this test folder, I have some clips here. And basically what we want to do is we want to, I mean, of course, normally in a project, you do this for all of your clips, but we want these to play back faster. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these, right click and generate optimized media. Now, before we do that, I want to show you a cool trick. Um, sometimes, let's say you're in your editor and Let's say you have footage in like a bunch of different spots. So we can see like in this scenario, I have footage in this test folder, in this footage folder. What you can do if you want to access all of these clips at once, come down here to smart bins, add smart bin. And of course, all of these for me are from the GH5. So I'm just going to write GH5. And then what I'm going to do is I know they all start with P. Boom. Create smart bin. Now when I go down here, Every single one of my clips, including the clips that are in the test folder, are now down here. And you can see here are all the ones that are in our test folder down here. But of course, they're all being showed. So what I would do then, then I click Command A or Control A if you're on Windows and then generate optimized media. Uh, that's just a quick little tip because I one time had a project where I had we had like 17 folders uh, broken up into days and it was very confusing to get it around, but this is just the easiest way. So if you want to grab all of your clips from all your folders, just do that. But anyway, we're going to go back to test. We're going to go back to media so you can see this. Whoops. The first thing you have to do is come to file, project settings, and then we have to change what type of optimized media we want and where we want it to be stored. So I've already put my working folders, my cache location. That is where your actual optimized media is going to be stored. Um, I put it in a cache test folder. Uh, but of course, you're going to want to put this wherever you want. Um, make sure it's something that would, is going to stay with your machine while you edit, of course. Um, but then we come to the optimized media and render cache. Um, basically, we can choose our optimized media resolution. So either the original resolution, whether it be 4K or 1080 or whatever it may be. Uh, half quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth. So, I mean, if you're working with like 8K footage, you know, you definitely might want to go like one eighth, one sixteenth, especially if you're on a laptop or something like that. For me, the MacBook Pro does pretty well with a large resolution. So, I'm just going to do half because I don't really think it's going to make that big of a difference in this project. Like, granted, if I had like 2,000 clips, yeah, I'd probably go like a quarter or something. And then, of course, we have our optimized media format. Now, if you're on Windows, you may want to do a DNX HR or a GoPro Cineform. Um, personally, I would not do the uncompressed. Uh, that's just a little too much. 
Um, but what I like to do is either ProRes LT or I believe if you're on Windows, I'm pretty sure it's DNxHR LB. Um, can't swear to that, but I'm almost positive it is. So anyway, I'm going to click on the proxy. And what that's going to do is then when I make these optimized media files, they're going to actually render a half resolution. So roughly two and a half K or whatever it may be. Uh, ProRes 422 proxy. Now, the great thing about being on a MacBook Pro is that proxy files, of course, run, or excuse me, not just proxies, ProRes files run so much better on a MacBook Pro. So when I actually do this, not only is it taking some weight off just in general because it's a much smaller file, and of course, it's half the resolution, but it's also a much better codec that my computer can actually, you know, uh, break down. Now, there's also render cache format. Render cache is basically, it's a little much to get into, but pretty much what it is, is inside your timeline, if you turn it on, um, it'll render every single part of your timeline, so that way when you go back and you play through, it's kind of like transcoding what's in your timeline. Um, we don't have to worry about that right now, so we're going to click save, and now we can finally make our uh, generate optimized media. Right click, generate optimized media, and boom, here we go. Now, there's a big advantage and disadvantage to it taking up your computer like this. As we can see, we cannot go and edit anything. So the disadvantage is that, like in Premiere, where you have the proxy workflow where you can easily go in and keep editing, obviously your computer is stuck to generating optimized media. But the advantage to that is one of the things that I notice about Premiere in particular is that when you were running a proxy workflow in the background while editing, not only is your editing way slower, but your proxies are now being made 10 times slower. So the advantage to this is although, yes, it takes up time because you have to walk away from your machine, basically, at the same time, it does it way faster than Premiere did. I actually did about 2,000 4K clips um, that were roughly all over 150 megabytes, uh, you know, clips themselves. And DaVinci Resolve did all of those clips in roughly seven hours, and Premiere Pro it took, I think, like 36 hours. So, I mean, that's just a little ridiculous. But so for me, it takes way less time. So for me to have to just walk away and do something else really isn't that big of a deal. Um, granted, obviously, if you have a massive project, I would recommend doing it overnight. Um, but in this case, it's not bad. It takes me you know, a couple minutes and I go walk around, get some coffee, drink some tea if you're into that. Whatever you're, uh, whatever you're into. So when it's done, what we're going to have is we're going to have now ProRes LT versions of all of these clips. So the cool thing is nothing changes. Our clips are here just as they were before. We can throw them in the timeline and do whatever we want. Um, we could stack them up. And I'm not going to really do that. But let's just see if I can get this to play right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get rid of or actually no, no yeah no we'll get rid of those for now and we'll mute so you're not deaf but it should be able to play back yeah it looks like we're not dropping any frames and mind you that's several clips playing over top uh yeah and if this was h264 <laughs> that would not slide uh, let me make this smaller yeah, so now all of these are basically ProRes LT files. They are half the resolution. And of course, if you really wanted to, you come up to playback. You can delete all of your optimized media, which is kind of handy, like if you're done with a project um, and you know you don't need to edit anymore. I would personally just delete it because, you know, depending on what file size or how many clips you have, that can take up a lot of space. Um, this is that render cache I was talking about. If you do smart cache, it'll basically, I'll show you. If you click on it, smart cache. Um, may not do it for this timeline, but oh, yeah, so it'll see it's red right there. And then uh, as it plays through and as it renders that it turns blue. So basically that way, when you go back now, the blue section would work perfectly fine. Obviously, this is playing back fine because we have optimized media. But in a case where you didn't want to use optimized media, render cache is a great way to get a little bit extra. And if you wanted to, you could even come down to proxy mode and turn down to half resolution or quarter resolution. That's again great if you didn't make optimized media. The best thing about optimized media is that you have control and that you can go in and get exactly the, the codec you want and the frame rate, or excuse me, not the frame rate, the uh, size you want and all of that. And that's actually one of the best parts too is it just easily assumes the frame rate and does it the same. So if your project is 23.976, all of your clips are gonna be generated to 23.976. If they're 60 frames, all gonna be 60. So it keeps the, the frame rate of the clip 
and it just you know does everything like that so that's cool too um but anyway that's pretty much it that's the way to generate optimized media and edit you know some big files on a small computer so hope you guys enjoyed this video i do have some more videos coming soon to be sure to subscribe like and comment below and i will uh, catch you guys soon